And this first one, we are talking about surfactant, soap, or something similar, small molecule, rather than small molecules. They are molecules of special design that contains a quite often a polar end, sometimes people call it a polar head group, and a non-polar tail organic quite often an organic tail that help dispersion of one phase in another liquid phase or your solvent typically we have one polar head group okay and a i draw it like this means a organic uh, long tail most of them organic and most of them are so-called non-polar which means um lipophilic or hydrophobic okay and two parts in a um, surfactant molecule as we said one is the non-polar or lipophilic lipo which means like oil philic means like lipo means like oil or hydrophobic tail these types of tail are quite often they do not like water hydrophobic they hate water but they like oil okay the tail and typically there are relatively short chain um tail that repeat that repels water and uh, other polar substance will attract the non-polar solvents or molecules vinyl groups for example and uh, the polar head group this part the polar head group we call it uh, lipophobic polar means they have charge separation, clear charge separation, and quite often they hate, phobic, they hate lipo, hate oil. And uh, hydrophilic, they like hydro, they like water. Okay, those head group quite often they like water, and they attract water or other polar solvents or polar um, species. And uh, the typical head group are hydroxy head group, OH, right? OH, quite often they have a charge separation, or carboxy acid group, or sulfonate SO3 minus group, sulfate, ammonium, or amino. These types of highly polar group, they are the so called uh, um, head group, polar head group, hydrophilic, lipophobic. They hate oil, they like water. The non polar tail. The non-polar one, they like oil, lipophilic, but they hate water, hydrophobic, okay? And the, this one is a schematic of a so-called finely dispersed oil droplet in water. Sometimes people call it a miso. Miso. You see this blue portion is oil and the pink one is actually water and in order to help them to disperse an individual small oil droplet instead of all the oil collapsing together float at the bottom to do that you have to add some type of surfactant and in this case the non-polar tail the non-polar tail the non-polar which means it likes oil it's inserted into the inside of the oil droplet while the head group the polar head group stick out and all these head groups stick into the surface to help reduce the surface tension the interfacial energy between the oil droplet and the water so now we have so-called emulsion oil small water oil droplet in water emulsion or so-called miso Without this surfactant, what would happen? All the small oil droplet, you shake it, you let it sit a little bit, all the small oil droplet would uh, come together to reduce the total interfacial energy. In the end, you have two layers, two big parts. The oil part quite often lower density flows at the top and the water part at, sits at the bottom. Without adding this surfactant, you do not have a stable slurry okay and uh, surfactant features quite often you add at what high concentration low concentration very low concentration 0.1 weight percent 
of 0.01 weight percent with respect to the dispersed phase. Very little. You do not want to add a lot of surfactant in that. They are expensive and also they are going to change your properties. Okay, so you add very low concentration into the system. Okay, so uh, reduce surface tension and interface. Then classification of surfactant, and there are so-called non-ionic surfactant, which means when you get some into the water, they do not really form positive negative charge, non-ionic. Okay, non-ionic hydro group, non-polar um, tail. In comparison, there are so-called anionic, which means negative ion surfactant. When you put them into the water, it has a relatively large negatively charged ion head group and nonpolar tail, which is okay. This one, the head group is a negatively charged uh, group, oh, widely used. And uh, we have tends to absorb onto surface neutral or surface positive particles. If the particle surface is positive, of course the head group will stick to the negative charged particles. Okay, cation surfactant, which means when you dissolve them, it the head group will become positively charged and um, not very common, uh, relatively large positive charged polar group and non-polar tail tends to absorb on negatively charged particles. This one had a group positively charged, they attach to negatively charged surface particles with negatively charged surface. And for tyric surfactant, which means long non-polar tail and the head group contain both positive and negative, depending on quite often the pH of the solvent that you use. Um, surfactant and the effects on surface tension. Here we are giving some surfactant, some additional examples of surfactant. This one is, if you have to guess, when I dissolve this thing in water, the sodium would go, which means I would have a so-called anion a negatively charged ion head group, and then a non, a long, relatively long non-polar tail, which is this part, right? Which the tail likes the oil, while the SO3 group likes the water, water fish. So this would be one surfactant. The other surfactant is probably uh, less ionic, we have this one, I'm not going to read it, I'm, I'm not all trained organic chemistry, but again, this part, as you see, all C and H, all C and H, this is so-called nonpolar, right? Nonpolar group. And this part, hydrophilic, because within each of these, it got a oxygen and carbon, oxygen and carbon. So this would be the hydrophilic part. Not exactly ionic, but this has a group or end that is polar and non-polar. And uh, whatever surfactant you use, typically, they does one thing. Typically, they does one thing. I'm plotting what? Read. Surface tension versus what? Amount of surfactant or concentration of surfactant that you are adding with respect to quite often in your solid phase. And for most of them, as we add more and more surfactant, what happens? The surface tension decrease, and clearly here we are decreasing from 70 a water typically. As we add more and more, the surface tension drops first rapidly and then gradually okay reduce the surface tension that's the what happens when we try to disperse like oil phase in water to get a so-called missile or emulsion okay and uh, okay so 
Of course, we are not trained organic chemists, and quite often we'll go and choose the ones that are other people use it, we use it, or whatever you have, you use it, you use them, and see whether it gives you the desired property. And of course, if you are dealing with highly sensitive electronics, do you want to add sodium in there? No, if you are dealing with highly sensitive electronics, you probably want to use something that are purely organic, which means you can burn them away cleanly. Well, the ones that contain sodium, the soap ones, they are cheap, but quite often the sodium, the iron, when you dry, the sodium will not be dried. It will leave in the system and create an electronic defects. That's kind of the guiding principle. Depends on your application, okay? And the HLB number for surfactant or suspension, we will mention this quickly. HLB, hydrophilic, H, L, lipophilic, balance number. Hydrophilic, uh, hydrophilic, which means it likes water. Some part of the surfactant likes water, always a polar group. Some part lipophilic, which means lipo means oil. Lipophilic means some part is non-polar, it likes kind of oil phase. And the surfactant is always kind of like balanced between these two. Okay. It's an arbitrary number to quantify the relative strength of the polar or we say hydrophilic H and the non-polar or we say lipophilic L groups within a surfactant or solvents or solid molecule. Zero means extremely lipophilic or nonpolar, extremely hydrophobic. 20 means extremely hydrophilic or polar, okay? And here we list uh, kind of the, just for your information, the HLB number for different uh, kind of side groups. These ones, sodium sulfate kind of high, highly, hydrophilic likes water when you dissolve this thing in water the sodium goes you have a, a anion right similar for this guy and these types vinyl groups the ch3 groups they are essentially oil and they have a low number okay and uh, typically the hlb number you get it by adding the side groups for the molecules and the range for common application typically if it's three to six. We use them so called water in oil emulsifier. A low number, which means we are trying to disperse water and small droplet within uniformly within oil. Okay. Seven to nine it's wetting agent to help the one liquid abides another one. 8 to 18, above 10, they are more closer to water, which means we are trying to disperse oil in water emulsifier. Emulsifier, it just means disperse one phase and small droplet within another phase. But here, when that HLB number is high, we are dispersing the oil phase finally into water phase, like milk, like with a typical emulsifier. Emulsion, right? Small oil droplets dispersed uniformly within water, right? Milk is essentially the majority is not oil, it's actually water. Okay? And some even higher number for detergent. When you think of detergent, in most cases we are using what to wash? Water, right? Well, in most cases we are using water to wash. Detergent is just those surfactant we are adding in at low concentration to help lift off the soil particles right will help helping to disperse the soil particle uniformly within the water so that i can bring it away a little bit of oil i'm not uh, using detergent to wash heavy oil right and typically you are you are doesn't work if it contains a lot of grease it doesn't work okay so these are the hlb number for the common and different applications and estimation of hlb number just by video observation Okay, if we have a clear solution of that stuff in water, the HLB number is quite often very high, which means it really likes water. On the other hand, no dispersion at all. Clear separation, 
that's like oil, HLB number is very low, and the milky dispersion, cotton seed oil, after agitation, it's something in between. Okay. Uh, we are not going into detail for these things. Just okay, you know that such a thing, that's a dispersion, uh, that's a fact that you can add to help me disperse my particles. And the choice depends on availability, cost, and your application. And you have to try. That's not much scientific guidance. You just have to try. Just by keeping your mind, you do not add that stuff in high concentration. Less than, quite often, less than 0.1%. 1% way, way lower than 1% with respect to your solid you are trying to disperse okay do not add a lot of this stuff 